Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. We see very high interest in building LLM agents using open source LLMs. And so we wanted to talk through how to do that from scratch using Llama 3. So first, what is an agent? So Lily and Wang is a very nice blog post that laid out the central components of agents being planning, memory, and tool use. So I wanna walk through these components individually and how I can use them with Llama 3. So first let's talk about tool use. I'm gonna copy over some code and we're gonna walk through it. So I have this notebook, done a few pip installs, set a few API keys, we'll use Grok as our LM, we'll use Tavili uh, for web search as one of our tools, and we'll use Langsmith for tracing, but that's all I've done here, okay? And I'm gonna kind of have this image side by side so we can look at it. So first, tool use. What's the big idea here? The big idea is simply this. I wanna take an LLM, give it awareness of some external tool that exists, and have the LLM return the payload necessary to invoke that tool. That's really all that's going on. Now this is often kind of confused and I wanted to kind of zoom in and explain this exactly. So let's say I have a function called magic function which, which takes an input and adds two to it. I want to give an LLM the ability to recognize whether or not, or not to invoke this function and to return the payload necessary to run the function given the user input. So here's exactly what I want to have happen. I want to take that function somehow bind it to my LLM, and given an input, then return both the function name itself and the arguments necessary to run the function. Remember, LLMs are just string to string, right? It doesn't have the magic ability to call that function natively, but what it can do is return, okay, I've seen this function, I know it exists, and I'm gonna give you exactly like the input format necessary or the payload to run the function, as well as the name of the function, okay? So that's really all that's going on. So. First, this tool decorator in Langchain allows you to take any arbitrary function, just turn it into a tool. And let's just kick this off. So here's my magic function, and here's a web search function. So these are two things that I want to kind of turn into tools, and I can do that right here. So we can run this. Now if I look at magic function, now it's a structured tool, it has a name, it has a description, and um, it also has that input or arguments as uh, captured as a pedantic schema. Okay, so all this information can be passed directly to our LLM. That's the key point. So this allows us to go from arbitrary functions to tools that can be bound to an LLM. Okay, so that's kind of step one. Now step two, this is where things are kind of interesting. I'm gonna use Grok here, and I'm gonna use a prompt. I'm basically gonna say, your helpful assistant with two tools, web search and a custom function. Use web search for current events, use the magic function if the user directly asks for it, otherwise just answer directly, okay? So that's kind of my prompt. And let's test this in two cases to explain exactly how this works, okay? So all I'm doing, I'm using chat grok, setting llama 3, 70B, and I'm creating this uh, runnable, this is kind of a lang chain primitive for basically invoking LLM, so that's all I've done. Now, here's what's interesting. This is piping the prompt to an LLM, and I've bound my tools to the LLM. So this is automatically taking those tools we defined and it's basically giving them to the LLM so that it's aware of them. So it's rep that's basically represented in this red box here. You take external tools and you basically bind them to the LLM so the LLM is aware that they exist. That's kind of step one. Now here's step two. I can basically take a question. So I'm gonna ask what is magic function three? I'm gonna invoke my runnable or my chain, right, with this and let's see what happens. I'm gonna run this. Now, here's what's interesting. That payload contains an object tool calls, which contains the name of the function and the arguments. That's it. So that's the key thing. And I can look at the raw payload as well. So the raw payload is just simply this AI message. It contains you know a bunch of information, but here's the main thing. It contains basically um, the name of the function to call and the arguments to pass to the function. So again, that's exactly represented here. All that's happening is, I've taken a function, I've turned it into a tool, I've bound it to my LLM, I can ask a question in natural language and the LLM can respond directly with the, L the function to call or the tool to use and the input argument to use based upon the user input. That's the key point and that's really all that's happening with function calling. That's all I need to know. Okay, so here's the other key thing. What if I just ask a question about the United States? Based on my prompt, it should not try to invoke any of these tools. Now let's test that. I run this, good. And so this payload tool calls is empty. I can look at the raw payload. And yeah, now it's just a chat response, right? The capital of the US is Washington DC, great. Okay, so that's it. 
So hopefully now you understand how tool use works. And now remember, this requires an LLM that's actually been fine-tuned or prompted or otherwise is compatible with tool use. And this is a very important point. Uh, we talked to the folks at Croc. They have kind of an, an, a proprietary implementation for how they do this, um, which we don't know fully, but it is reported that works very well with Llama 70B, Llama 370B, and that, in my experience, I've seen it do indeed work quite well. So in any case, the key point is this. I can take any arbitrary functions I want. I can turn them into tools. I can then pass those tools to an LLM. I can bind them. And then you can see right here, when I invoke my LLM with a question, the LLM makes the decision to use one of the tools. And if it does, it's going to return to you the name of the tool it wants to use and the input argument. That's the key point. Okay. So that is really what uh, you need to know about tool use. Now we get to the fun stuff. We're going to build the agent. And for this, I'm going to use LangGraph. And I'm going to explain kind of how this works over time. But first, the way I think about LangGraph is basically it's a way to lay out flows. And flows in particular with LangGraph are often characterized by cycles, so the ability to kind of do feedback. And that's really relevant for agents. And we'll explain why here shortly. So LangGraph basically takes a state, which can live over the course of your graph or flow. And it can be accessed by all kind of what we're going to call nodes in your graph. OK, so first, as state, I'm just going to find a set of messages. And don't worry too much about this for now. This will all make sense in about a minute. OK, now here's where things are going to get interesting. I'm going to define an agent that contains two nodes. OK, so first, first, we're going to take our input. Again, it's a human message. We pass that to our LLM, which has the bound tools. The LLM is going to make a decision to use a tool or not. Now, we just walk through this. So that's the step one. That's this thing we've already seen, right? Now, what we're going to do in LangGraph is we're going to add basically what we're going to call an, a conditional edge. So this edge is going to, all it's going to do is say, was there a tool call or not? If there was a tool call, I'm going to route that over to a separate node that basically runs the tool. So let's walk through with our example we just did. Um, what is magic function of three? The LLM made the decision to invoke the magic function and it gave it had the, it gave us the payload, right? We just saw that. So that's arguments, input is three, name is magic function. Those get plumbed over to what we're gonna call tool node, which actually invokes the necessary tool. So it's gonna basically take in this name magic function, it's gonna look up magic function itself, and it's basically just gonna run that function with this input payload. And then it's going to return that as a tool message to the LLM. That's all it's going to go on. LLM is going to see that tool message. It's going to make a decision about what to do next. And eventually, this is going to keep running until there's a natural language response. And this, in this kind of toy example, the tool message would return with the result of five. That would be returned to the LLM. The LLM would see that and say, OK, the result is five. And then you would exit. So that's like the toy example we want to, we want to see. Now we can implement this all in LangGraph really easily. And let's actually just talk through that quickly. I've copied over the code here. So all basically we've defined here is we have this assistant. So this is basically just wrapping the chain that we defined up here, this assistant runnable. We just wrap that. And basically all we're doing here is we're adding a retry. So basically if a tool is, if a tool is called, then we're good, that's valid. If it has meaningful text, we're good. But otherwise, we do reprompt it. That's all that we're doing here, right? We're just making sure that the LLM actually returned a valid response. So that's really all to worry about here. There, um, we're also creating this tool node. So this tool node basically just will try to invoke the tool, um, and it'll basically have a little. Um, we're going to add a little thing to handle errors in the feedback. That this is all. These are just like utility functions. So I don't really worry too much about them. Now here's kind of the interesting bit. We're just going to build the graph, and it's going to look exactly like we show here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a node for our assistant, right? We're going to add a node for our tool node, and that's kind of this piece and this piece. That's our tool node. Um, and then we're going to add this conditional edge, which is a tools condition, which is all it's going to be is this piece. It's basically going to take the result from the LM. Is a tool called? If yes, go to the tool node. If no, end. And we, we can implement that right here. Um, so this tools condition, that's all it's going to do. It's basically going to return either a tool was invoked or end. Um, and then we go from tools back to the assistant. Now let's run all this and we can see what's nice about LangGraph is we actually, it'll automatically lay this out as a graph for us. We can visualize it here. So what's going to happen is we're going to start, we're going to invoke our assistant. 
um, our assistant will, in some cases, um, ask to use a tool. It'll go then go to the tool node, the tool will be invoked, that will return to the assistant, and that will continue until there's a natural language response, and then we'll end. That's it. Nice and easy. So let's actually test this out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. Let's ask a super simple question. So let's look at what we were, I have kind of two questions. What is magic function three? And what is the weather in SF? Let's ask question, the first question. What's magic function three? Boom. So we're going to run this now. Now I'd like to go over to Langsmith and look at the result here. So let's actually just walk through this. This basically allows us to say, we basically started, we went to our assistant, and these are the functions available to our assistant. So that's kind of, you know, we gave it magic function, we gave it web search. You know, here's the prompt. What's magic function three? And what we get as an output is again, the function to use and the payload to pass to the function. So again, remember, this is a kind of a, always a little bit of a confusing thing. An LLM can't magically call functions. An LLM is typed string to string. It can return strings um, and it ingests strings. So that's fine. All it's gonna return in this particular case is just the payload to run the function as well as the function name. But that's it, that's all the LLM is responsible for. Then what we need to do is we have this tools node, see that's here, that will then invoke our function. And so you can see the input is just the argument, the output is you know three plus, uh, three plus two, five, great. Now this goes back to our LLM and then our LLM just simply sees, okay, it sees this tool message that the function was called, here's the output of five and it returns natural language, the result of magic function is five. And then we end, that's it, nice and simple. And we can see that also kind of laid out here. Here's our human message. This is the AI message. Um, so basically the AI makes the decision to invoke the tool and it gives you the input payload. Then here's the output tool message saying, I ran the tool, here's the output that LLM gets that back and basically gives you natural language. And then based upon our condition here, this tools condition, if it's natural language, it ends. If it's a tool invocation, it goes back to the tool node, right? So that goes to here. Um, so in this regular case, it went back to the assistant and now it's a natural language response, which means we just end, that's it. So that's kind of a nice and simple example. Now, if we go, let's try something like slightly more complicated. Let's try our other tools. So let's like try what's the weather in SF right now. Um, so we're gonna try to run that. And cool, we can actually see that it's going to call our web search endpoint. That's great. It gets this, this kind of raw tool message back from the endpoint. And then the AI will synthesize that into, uh, you know, the weather is 60 degrees right now with mist. Okay, so that's really it. This explains how you can lay out arbitrary agents with Llama 3, open source LLM. Uh, we use chat Grok to do that. Grok has been uh, adapted for tool use, and that's the kind of main important thing you need to recognize that you need an LLM that actually has tool use enabled via prompting or fine tuning or otherwise. Um, and what you can see is if we kind of go back to the diagram, what we've done here is we're using Landcraft to kind of orchestrate this process. And what's going to happen is you take a question in, our LLM makes the decision based on the question to invoke a tool, and then this conditional edge will determine, hey, if a tool is, is kind of invoked, then go to the tool node and actually execute the tool. The tool is executed, you get a tool message back with the tool output, send that back to the LLM, LLM reasons again, and it could make a decision to call another tool, but in our particular case, in both cases, the tool message output was return, returned to the LLM. The LLM then responds in natural language. Here's the solution. And because of that, we end. And that's it. That's kind of how to build an agent from scratch using an open source LLM, Llama 3, with Langraph to orchestrate it, hopefully um, from kind of, kind of very simple components and first principles. And again, the key thing here really is the ability or the ability for an LLM to reliably invoke tools. So we talked through the case of adding two tools, magic function and web search to our agent. Now let's say we wanted to make this a little bit more complicated and try some additional tools. So Replicate is a service that allows you to, to access many different uh, models, which is really convenient. And I'm gonna go ahead and use it uh, to augment Llama 3 with a few multimodal capabilities. So all I've done is I've set my Replicate API key. So I've actually already done that. I've import Replicate. And I'm gonna use a few different things here. So I'm gonna do a text to cert, text to image tool, which is gonna call this particular model, which is basically an open DALI model, which will go from text to image. 
Um, I'm going to create again another tool, image to text. In this case, take an image in. It'll use a, a lava, uh, a version of lava to then produce text from the image, and text to speech. This is another option. So really, all you need to do here is very simply just again use this tool decorator with a function definition that invokes the model of choice. So now the question is, how do we add these as tools to our agent? So again, it's kind of like before. All we need to do is just update our tools list to include some of our new functions here. That's it, pretty simple. Now that tools list is already bound to our, our, uh, our agent here. So let's just go ahead and kind of rerun everything just to make sure this all works. And all I'm gonna do here is just update my question list to include a few new questions that are related to my new tools. And let's go ahead and try one. So let's say I want to try um, my index two question, so questions two. And this is gonna be my question related to um, image to, uh, this is gonna be text to image. So let's basically say, I'll kick this off and I'll go back and show you. Um, so this is going to basically, uh, in, hopefully invoke the text image tool based on this prompt, a yellow, a yellow puppy uh, running, th running free with wildflowers in the mountains behind. So that's our prompt. We're gonna pass it to um, our text image tool. <clears throat> and it looks like that has been called correctly, so that's great. Now we can also go over to Langsmith. I can check my projects here. Uh, cool, here's my agent. Here it is running. So we can also look at the trace to confirm that everything's working, so cool. So it looks like it is calling text image tool, so that's fantastic. That's running right now. <clears throat> Great, so our tool ran. Now we can check our image here. And look at that, very nice. So again, this is just showing you <clears throat> the ability to create agents that have many different types of tools. Again, previously we only had covered uh, kind of two very simple tools, a magic function, web search, but we can actually do pretty interesting things. So this actually shows how you can take Replicate, for example, and basically invoke many different LLMs hosted by Replicate, or, or you know, not just LLMs, but different types of models. So this is a text image model, image to text, and so forth, text to speech, basically to augment Llama 3 and give it multimodal capabilities. So in any case, it's a really nice kind of illustration of the fact that um, agents are very general and tools can be composed of many different kinds of things. In this particular case, different models through Replicate, which we can attach to Llama 3 to augment its capabilities. Thanks.